Hey everyone, this is Fide Master Kostya Kavutsky here for Chess.com's YouTube channel. And today I want to show you guys a few examples of uh, really strong pawn sacrifices that lead to a dangerous initiative and a winning attack. So the position you have on the board right now, I want you guys to try to find the best move here for white. And one thing that I want to point out that you should probably know is that in the following game black already moved their king so that means that they have forfeited their right to castle and that should definitely be useful in your calculations in trying to find and justify the best move so playing white here was the great world champion Mihail Tal and he found the very strong move d5 so I'm sure a lot of you found this move either because you're really good or because I told you that today's lecture is going to be about pawn sacrifices. But anyways, it's one thing to find a move like d5. It's another thing to justify playing it, right? You can't just give a pawn and expect to win immediately. You have to justify your sacrifice and find some strong forcing moves to build on your initiative. So the point of this move, of course, is to try and open lines against the Black King, which, as we already know, is going to be stuck in the center for at least a little while. So Black has to play E takes D5, and now Tall found the brilliant move Rook F E1. And if you found this move in your calculations, then kudos to you, because this is really the key point of the whole sacrifice, simply lining a Rook up against the Black King. So the point is that if black takes our knight, we take with check. Pretty much no matter what black does, they're getting absolutely killed on the e-file. Uh, if the king runs, we simply have bishop g5 check and rook a d1 check and black is getting mated. So bishop e7 is forced and then bishop c5 and white is winning their piece back with a completely winning position. For example, king f8 takes, 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 threatening a discovery check against the black king and also the bishop is hanging so black is losing at least a piece. So for that reason black cannot take this knight. So king d8 was played and now queen b3. When you've sacrificed material and you're trying to build on your initiative it's really important that you make a threat with every move. Okay, you don't give your opponent any chance to consolidate or get some of his pieces out. The reason white has such a strong attack here is, of course, because black's king is in the center and is a big target for white's pieces. And also, black's pieces are disconnected and uncoordinated and aren't contributing anything, while white's pieces are well-placed, with the exception of the A1 rook, and are ready to start creating serious threats. So, queen b3... The main threat behind this move, among other things, is to play bishop b6, winning black's queen. So black here played c5, and now knight takes c5. And this tactic isn't so hard to find, basically. Black is undeveloped, so it's not hard to realize that the queen here is overloaded, and tall immediately takes advantage of that. And after queen takes b7, because of the threats of queen takes a8 and rook d1, black felt no reason to continue the game and simply resigned. This next position is taken from one of my own games where I felt that I found a pretty strong and energetic move here to punish my opponent for their last move which was queen a5, which is somewhat careless because they could have simply castled and had an okay position. So I want you guys to try and find a move that will prevent black from castling. Okay, if you want more time, then keep those videos paused. Otherwise, you're going to keep going. And I think here the best move is knight c4. So this move comes with a few ideas. The first one is obviously that we're hitting the queen with tempo. The second thing is that we're setting up the move bishop a3, which was impossible because this square was covered by the black queen. After bishop a3, black will no longer be able to castle and his king will pretty much be stuck in the center for good. And of course this rook won't get into the game which means effectively white will be playing with 
extra pieces on the board. So after black's only move, queen takes c3, the third idea of this move is that white is also threatening knight d6 check. So here white is getting a really strong initiative in pretty much all the lines. For example, after king f8, white can play bishop e3, and black is just behind in development. So for example, king g8, we have knight e4, forking the queen and bishop. So bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4. Black is still a few moves away from completing his development, and white is, of course, ready to increase his initiative with rook c1 and queen g4. Basically, white has a pretty large advantage here. A really cool line also occurs after king e7, which was pretty much the critical try for black to see if they can refute white's pawn sacrifice. Remember, we sacrificed this pawn on c3. Strongest continuation I would like you guys to find, and it's pretty challenging. I wasn't able to find it during the game, but I think it's a really instructive example of how to really play energetically and go for the attack at all costs. So I really urge you guys to pause the video and try to find the strongest move for yourselves. Okay, if you need more time, keep those videos paused. The strongest move is queen a4. And this move is simply setting up bishop a3. Once the bishop gets to a3, black's king is going to have some serious difficulties. Of course, to play a move like queen a4, you have to calculate two lines. The first is queen takes a1, right? If black just takes your rook, you have to prove that you didn't just blunder your rook, you, that you actually saw some kind of forcing continuation here. And of course, after bishop a3, white is simply winning. If the queen moves, let's say, to c3, we have knight e4 check, winning the queen. And taking on f1 won't do black any good because their pieces are still uncoordinated and disconnected and white's queen is getting ready to jump into the action. We still have this discovery check available and black's king is not going to survive very long. And finally, if queen takes a2, then white actually has a few ways to win. I think the simplest way is knight c4 check and if something like king d8 then we have bishop e7 check winning the queen and if king d7 then strong move queen b4 and queen b7 check is a threat it's practically undefendable white is basically just mating black here another way to win would have been bishop takes c6 with the idea of knight takes c6 queen takes c6 and white is probably just mating black here the next few moves Queen c7 check is a threat, queen b7 check. This knight can still move and create some nasty discovery against the king, and black is just not surviving. So a bit of calculation was required there, but if you want to become a strong player and play really strong attacking moves, you're going to have to build up your calculation at some point, right? So the other line that was necessary to have been calculated is of course, if black takes your knight, with king takes d6. And here white wins just by completing their development and checkmating the king. So bishop a3 check, let's say king d7 and rook c1, and black is just busted. All of white's pieces are getting into the game, queen d3, rook takes d6, black can simply resign. Okay, we're either winning all of black's pieces or we're going to mate them. So this is pretty much over. So what I want you guys to take from this lesson is a few things. One is to always look for these tactical possibilities of exploiting the fact that your opponent hasn't castled yet. Once you have that down, then you'll find yourself just naturally looking for really aggressive and ambitious possibilities where you give up a pawn or even a piece, but in return you get a very strong initiative against the king and the ability to get all your pieces into the attack and start creating really dangerous threats. Another thing I wanted you guys to take away from this is that if you are going to sacrifice material, you have to make sure that 
you try to calculate as much as you can because there's going to be a lot of hidden tactical resources in every sharp position that you're not going to be able to find unless you train and hone your calculation skills to their maximum. Thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you around on chess.com.